Welcome for joining the webinar today. My name is Amanda Dadro. I'm a portfolio analyst with Tricom Funding. As a financial solutions provider to the staffing and consulting industry, it is our philosophy to be an active member in the staffing industry by staying abreast of the ever-changing marketplace. For this reason, Tricom was pleased to launch the Industry Insider webinar series designed to share our expert knowledge and resources with our fellow staffing industry colleagues. One of our values is to build relationships and become a leading resource to the staffing and consulting firms nationwide. Our today are Mary Jo Heim and Mike Foster. Mary Jo, the Director of Accounting, joined Tricom in 1996 and was put at your controller in 1998. Mary Jo is a certified public accountant and a certified payroll professional. Mary Jo is also a member of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Anderson Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Mayor's team of accountants have nearly a half century of combined staffing industry accounting experience. Her clients rely upon her accounting knowledge and expertise for financial preparation and guidance. My a member of the Tricom Funding team since 1999 and holds a bachelor's degree in accounting from Marquette University. She gained over 14 years of staffing industry knowledge and experience which he applies directly to the compilation and analysis of his financial statement. Walking his clients through the financial statement process in order to help them get a better understanding of their business and does allow them greater control of their costs. In this session, Industry Insider Webinar Series, as you're ready to wrap up 2013 and run the new year, we'll review items and critical changes essential to your staffing firm Include 2013 FUTA tax credit states, state federal tax updates, employment and insurance integrity, minimum wage changes, and unemployment wage based changes. By this session, you'll have all the information you need to take the frenzy of year end and face the new year with confidence. If you have questions during the presentation, please use the QA feature located on the right toolbar. For the presentation, there will be time for questions and an opportunity for you to give us your feedback on today's webinar by completing a short exit poll. So I'll turn the floor over to Mary Jo. Good afternoon. Um, we're in the home stretch of the payroll year, and now is a good time to get all your ducks in a row so you can start off the new year correctly. Um, we've gathered a variety of information for you today to be on the right track for success year end and to start the new year right. Um, at the good, at least we're not hanging on the fiscal cliff this year. Our presentation is going to uh, be broken out into three distinct areas today. We have some reminders that are some administrative items that need to be done each year. We have some updates which are changed to the current items that are that change every year. And we have some new items for 2014. And none of these will lead us to an ultimate goal of allowing you to breathe a little bit easier in the upcoming weeks. Form. An employee who feels that they will not have a, they will have a tax liability in 2013 and exempt or any employee who has a change in exemptions needs to fill out a new W-4. Those new W-4s, if someone is exempt, those need to be filed to by February 18th. Credit. Uh, in addition to the standard earned income tax credit version on the back of the W-2, there are states that require employers to give additional EIC notice to their employees. In Illinois, allow you to use the notice 797. Uh, that's a federal notice that uh, talks a little bit about EIC, uh, and that needs to be given to the employee with a range of when their W-2 comes. So either a week before or with the W-2, or sometime in the week after you give them their W-2, they need to have this notice as well. Uh, Louisiana requires you to use either the federal or the Louisiana notice, and that needs to begin at the time of hire. Maryland requires you to use the Maryland sample notice, and that must, uh, needs to be given by December 31st each calendar year. New Jersey requests that you use the state treasurer notice, and that needs to be done sometime between January 1 and February 15th each year. Texas allows you to use the, the federal notice, and it needs to be presented no later than March 1st each year. 
uh, here would like you to put their notice out where you're putting all your other employer employee notices. Uh, these notices are available right now on ICOM's website under the Resources tab. Your announcements are a number of items that need to be included on this year's W-2. Um, for those TRICOM clients, information probably has already been conveyed to TRICOM, but if you process your own payroll, remember that these items need to be included. Um, we'll go through each one of these individually. Group term life. If you have a life plan for your company and you cover your employees for over $50,000 of life insurance coverage, there's an imputed tax calculation that must be done. The cost to be added to the employee's wages are based on the amount of coverage over $50,000 the covered employee. These wage adjustments need to be done uh, the payroll because there are tax consequences that are involved. So you need to make sure you have time to do it during the payroll run, otherwise you're going to need to gross these up with the appropriate taxes. Personal use of company audits. If an employee has the privilege of using a, a company-owned vehicle for personal use, there's an allocation that needs to be done to impute income to the employees. Uh, there's a number of different methods that can be used for that. Um, the wage adjustment does need to raise appropriate tax withholding, so again, it needs to be done during a payroll run, so you can include those taxes. If you have a term disability plan for your employees and, and you know that someone has been on disability, uh, you should receive from your carrier form sometime in early January. That will uh, let you know what information needs to be put on the employee's W-2. If you're Jersey, the state releases the year-end reporting about the 12th of January. Cost benefits. Health insurance premiums paid on behalf of a 2% owner of an S corporation need to be taxed for state and federal purposes. Uh, holding is necessary on these, but you still need to gross up their state and federal taxable wage. Uh, some owners take this as a distribution of income instead, so that would require no payroll adjustment. Value of employer sponsored health care. Uh, employers with over 250 W2s in 2012 required to, to include the aggregate amount of employer sponsored health care costs. Means the total amount of employee and employer contributions to a health plan needs to be put in Act 12 using the DD code. This rule is the same as it was in this last year. Um, the IRS just hasn't updated it to include a smaller number of employers. So Anybody, it's the same rule last year, if you have 250 employees or more and you have any kind of health coverage, that total aggregate amount needs to be put in box 12 with a DD code. Urine bonuses. Uh, the big concern I have with urine bonuses is we found that um, generally it becomes special runs and we, you need to keep in mind um, that if you're doing these, these bonus runs on different dates that you need to watch payroll taxes. Uh, we did in the past where someone's, you know, on the high week you're doing a, uh, your normal check is Friday and on a mere Tuesday you do a bonus run and then you don't realize that that tax payment is due on Friday. And so if, if we're processing your payroll, uh, that's not going to be an issue, but if, if you're processing your own payroll, take note of that. It's going to have different timing. And, or if someone else is processing your payroll, you know, verify your, that it, it is different timing and those taxes are being paid early. Year end reports. There are reports that are generated during the year end process. Sometimes it's tricky to know what information you should follow, what information you should leave readily available for use in the following year. What we found is that there are a few items that seem to be people continue to ask us for this information, whether it's from an insurance questionnaire or you have RFPs or other inquiries. Generally speaking, uh, the number of W 2s that you processed and your total wage of W 2s. A lot of people will ask you for a W-3 report. Um, we don't run, no one uses W-3 reports anymore. Those are for when you submit to the Social Security Administration, all your W-2s on paper. So most really don't do that anymore, but people asking for your total wages on your W-2s for a lot of different reasons. So I want to leave those readily accessible. So when people are asking this information, being a year you have it available. Um, if you're an ICOM client and you do not wish to have your, your paper reports sent to you, we can obviously send them to you electronically via a secure um, transition. So you can 
off to your PC and you can have them for future use. Um, taxes. Everybody knows that um, corporate tax returns are generally, you know, you're, if you're on a calendar, your corporate tax return is due there on March 17th. So you will request information to you, obviously, as soon as possible to complete the tax returns by the date. So if you prepare your financial statements, your account um, will prepare all the information that you need to give to your accountant for your corporate taxes. For those of you who don't have Tricom prepare your financials, you'll get all your information to your accountant as soon as possible. Um, we have, will have all your reports to you by the second week in January as far as all the processing that we've done. Uh, Multi-state employer, keep in mind that your accountant will need the sales and payroll amounts for all the states that you're in. Um, if a full service Tricom client will be able to give you all that information. All you'll need to do is just contact your, your accountant at Tricom. Colleague Mike is going to go through some updates for 2014. In this section, we go over some updates that you will see for the 24 tax year. Notice that the Social Security wage limit has increased to 117,000. This was 113.7 in, in 2013. There's additional. 0.9% Medicare tax on wages are, that are in excess of $200,000 will remain in effect for 2014. Now, this additional tax is an employee-only tax, so the employee is not subject to the additional tax on wages above that $200,000 mark. The, the chart show now it lists the states that are subject to the food production for 2013. And there were five states that were removed from the list this year, Arizona, Florida, Nevada, New Jersey, and Vermont. They had all basically paid their loans back or received a waiver for not needing to be subject to the food production. There were no additional states that were added for 2013. And the, the rates on that previous slide will all increase 0.3% in 2014 if they cannot repay those loans and are subject to it again. Then some state unemployment updates. There are 15 states that will be increasing their unemployment wage base for 2014. In one state, Illinois, is reducing their wage base, and this is the amount of wages paid to each employee subject to the unemployment tax. The item is the minimum wage increases that are going to be going into effect in 2014. Some states have had these increases. The one item to note is that the state of California that minimum wage increase does not take effect until July 1st of 2014. If you're going into a new state that you have not been in before, Tricom's website has a resource page for each state. That in addition to giving them minimum wage information for states, it also provides uh, a lot of their information, whether or not the, the states have employer or employer disability requirements, um, just to charge sales tax on temporary staffing, and not the state may have any local or county withholding taxes. They are a resource page, and there is kind of like a one-stop shop for some general information as you're looking to do business into any new states. The following states have changed their tax tables for 2014. So, if you do have any employees in any of these states, they may see a change to their state withholding for 2014. You can also see that the mileage reimbursement will decrease a half cent next year down to 56 cents a month. For those of you that are in New Jersey, have employees in New Jersey, they have changed two of the four that make up their employee expense deductions. The employee employment rate, which is made up of the unemployment and the workforce development, has not increased. The employability rate has increased from 0.36% to 0.38% for 2014. And family leave or the FLI tax has remained the same at 0.1%. So 
So one rate has increased from 0.885% in 2013 to 0.905 in 2014 on that first one thousand five hundred dollars of wages. Although they be in California, California has increased the wage base for employee paid disability from one hundred thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars to one hundred one thousand six hundred and thirty six dollars for twenty fourteen but they have increased the actual rate that's charged on um, wages. The rate will stay the same at 1%. Now, some um, items that are new for 2014 or have changed a little bit from what was available in 2013. Um, last Illinois put in place a mandatory monthly reporting of employee wages uh, for employers larger than 250. This uh, was put in place uh, in order to assist with some both employment fraud and some Medicare uh, fraud that the, the state had been seeing. So what they're looking to do now for 2014 is mandatory filing for all employers that are greater than 50. For Triumph, um, uh, we've been filing for all Illinois employers um, since January of 2013. So there'll be change for that. But if you if you're in Illinois, you will need to file the IDES system on a monthly basis, total wages per employee, similar to what you're doing on a quarterly basis with your unemployment, but that it'll, the wages need to be done on a monthly basis. If you have questions on this, you can contact uh, a member of the accounting team. North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina enacted House Bill 98, reading personal exemptions. Um, so what that because of this bill, all uh, North Carolina employees must fill out new forms for 2014. So either form NC4 or NC4EZ must be filled out for all employees for pay in 2014. So if an employee doesn't give you the new form by this payroll, you should really be deducting single and zero exemptions. Another Minnesota and Wisconsin have been unable to resolve their uh, reciprocity issues between the two states. Um, Minnesota, Minnesota feels that Wisconsin owes them $6 million in back credits, and Wisconsin doesn't seem to agree. Um, it's unclear whether they desire, their desire is to get this resolved in 2015 or not. Um, for right then, any employee who lives in one state and works in another needs to file a tax return in both states. Um, Rhode Island has enacted a temporary caregiver insurance program. Uh, a temporary district program that they already have in place. It will allow uh, employees for four weeks of care benefits to care for either a seriously ill child, a spouse, a domestic partner, a parent, a parent-in-law, a grandparent, or bond either a new child or a, a newly born child, a newly adopted child, or even a foster child. Um, this is funded in, in the existing temporary disability program, so there will be no increased TDIH for this, but it's all employee funded. Uh, Massachusetts' current health care program, uh, called the Fair Share Contribution, repealed because Massachusetts felt that it, it lacked the Affordable Care Act legislation. So that has been repealed, but on January 1, it's been replaced really by the medical assistance contribution. Um, similar to the prior program in that still um, employer funded. The rate similar, the rate is 0.36%, which is, I said, similar to the, the contribution. It's also similar in that it's only for those employers with six or more employees. The prior program allowed new employers three before they were liable, but with the new program, it makes employers subject after one year at a lower rate, and then the rate increases each year until it's at 0.36 in year three. Uh, it has also enacted some new wage deduction regulations. Um, basically, there are four categories that permit you to deduct wages from an employee. Um, they're in accordance with any law or regulation. If there's, you know, the deduction is specified by any state labor law. If there are de deductions for 
any recovery of overpayment, it's not having to pay employee too much, or any basically getting back any wage advances that you may have you know, made to the employee. If you want some more information on that, just please visit the New York Department of Labor's website. The, this law also prohibits seven specific deductions. If there are deductions basically that are not in accordance with the regulation, they can't be deducted. If you're trying to deduct for any tools or equipment or clothing, uh, those can't be deducted. Trying to re unauthorized expenses, um, any losses that may be caused by the employee can't be deducted. If any fines or penalties that the employer is trying to impose on the employee that can't be deducted. Medical um, contributions, as well as any of the employer admin fees that they would try to charge the employee. If there are anything that they are deducted, employers must keep record of those authorizations that, that they receive from the employee, and they should keep on record for at least six years after, after the employment ends. Uh, there, there was an appeal for the regarding the MTA tax, and the Court of Appeals basically dismissed the case to overturn the MTA. And they really basically stated that, that there was no substantial constitutional question that was directly involved, so the MTA tax is still in effect. This other is, is the unemployment insurance integrity. Um, the Trade Adjustment Assistance Exchange Act, basically in 2011, just mandated that, that the employment agencies prohibit relieving employers from the benefit charges to their accounts if there are certain uh, certain areas that exist. And it, both of them have to be present in order for that to happen. The first is that if they are failing to respond in a timely manner, so when they're getting the notices from the states, they're just either ignoring them or not getting to them in time. And the other that has to go in conjunction with that is the employer would have to establish a pattern of failing to respond to these timely as well. Now, you know, will this mean to you be the result that states have been getting more firm deadlines to respond to this information so they may be as long as they used to be? Um, as well, some states are also putting penalties into place for those who are continuing to fail to get this information timely. So kind of what it comes down to is, you know, how can you better report for the unemployment information? Now, you're trying to obviously run your business, try to make sure that you are responding to all of these claims fully and timely. Can, can be a costly burden as well as time consuming as if you are in multiple states trying to keep up with each one of them. So, can use is a state information data exchange system, which is a free service that provides secure electronic as well as nationally standardized responses to these requests. If you informate additional information regarding the SIDES program, feel free to visit their website, which is info.uisides. A little bit more uh, conversation about the um, the, the pro the integrity. Really, it's stemming from what, what we talked about earlier: the few tax reduction. You know, a lot of these what had determined of a lot of the unemployment fund gone out to people had gone out. This is erroneously because of improper reporting by employers. Employers are waiting until it gets to the appeals court before they're actually trying to fight these. What these laws are telling you now is you're not going to go have that appeal handing this stuff in in a timely manner. Uh, you, we need to, as employers, we really need to be on top of this unemployment and some really good method 
uh, you're, you can go online, it's national, you're not going to go in multiple places. You know, go on and put your information in there in a lot timely manner and, and uh, stop a lot of the fraud that's going on in unemployment. And that's only going to help everyone. It's going to help you for your unemployment rate. It's, it's going to be very helpful. Plus, there's a, a, a lot of states, but some of these states are going to be putting 55, 50, 75. I know the state of Maryland has been doing it for a long time. They've been charging $15 for late filing of unemployment. But some states' goal is not to fine you. Their goal is for you to give them the information. So if we can, if we employers are more aggressive in getting this information, it's only going to help all of us. These future tax credits will go away. Our unemployment rates will go down. So actually, this is one thing we actually have some control about. So I think we need to really look at it as employers and, and figure out what our plan is. Is um, I don't people are, are large and some people may be using like our partner talks to do their unemployment, but a lot of us are not that large and we can go online and we can we can really access this and get these done in a timely manner. If you have questions on any of this integrity, please again contact somebody in the accounting department at Tricom. Uh, in 2014, Tricom will continue to, to bring these the industry um, inside our series. And sometime in 2014, Tricom will probably present again our additional ser um, tutor series, which are additional um, educational seminars both for sales and operations for your internal staff. Uh, we'll post these on our website and send out emails and notices and overnight flyers to uh, the dates that will be available in 2014 for these informative seminars. Okay, the floor is now open for questions. If you have questions, please go ahead and um, enter them into the chat feature or the uh, Q&A feature, and Mary Jo or Mike will be happy to answer any of them for you. I will open up a poll in the meantime um, for you to give us your feedback. Have anything um, that you could add to? I will say that um, within the next week and a half or two weeks, there'll be a, the Tricom Year End newsletter will be out. Uh, it has uh, some of this information and additional information. And once, we, as you can see, there's a couple states that are missing from the, the um, state page amount. So as soon as we get those, those will be also updated on our website. So. Uh, the middle information, all the state wage information, all the state information and notices, those are all available. And the state, as the state tools, as Mike stated, those are all available as great resources on our website. And again, any of any of the Tricom accounts is available to you at any point to ask questions on any of these items. I've gone ahead and put up um, the contact information. Did you um, want to reach out to any of them for additional questions or information? I'd like to thank you for participating in today's webinar, as well as uh, Mary Jo and Mike for sharing their knowledge about preparing for year end. The recording of this edition of the Industry Insider webinar will be available on our website at tricom.com under the Resources tab. Should you have questions again or like a copy of today's PowerPoint presentation, Feel free to reach out to one of us. Um, and thank you for your participation and watch for information at the next month's session, which will be on eVerify held on January 23rd. Thank you much. <laughs>